And what a feel. I've already been blessed by being here and feeling the presence of the Lord. How many is glad for that name of Jesus? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's still a saving name. It's still a special name, but it's still a saving name. Amen. And I praise God for that. I remember something I read. Uh, this come back to me when our brother was singing uh, a moment ago, but uh, I read about a medical missionary, and I forget his name right now, but this med medical missionary went to Africa many years ago, went to the very remote part of the jungles of Africa, and this guy was there on a double mission. By day, he was doctoring those people and treating their physical needs, and then at night, they were having church, and he was preaching the gospel to their soul, their spiritual need. And uh, they said that there was an inordinate amount of blind people, Brother Sparks, in that tribe, just an extra uh, amount of blind people. And they had sequestered them all off in their limited knowledge. They thought that that blindness was contagious, and so they had quarantined all those blind folks and they had them living in a in darkness and just helplessness. And that medical missionary got a burden. That's what he was there for. And he began to examine those people and come to find out most of them just had cataracts or something simple. Some of them had eye infections, and he was able to treat it, and they recovered their sight. Amen. And here's what thrilled me about that. They, they didn't have the words in their language for thank you. Those words did not exist in that African uh, dialect. And so here's what they said. They came to that missionary and they said, we will tell your name. Amen. Everywhere we go, when people say, what happened to you? You were blind. Now you see. What happened? They said, we will tell your name. How many is glad we got a name to tell the world about? Amen. Amen. It is still Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And I'll tell you what my mission is in life. I want to praise that name and I want to preach that name. Amen. I want to thank that name. We do have thank you in our language. So I'm not going to skip that. Amen. When we come in here, we come to thank His name, don't we? But when we go out there, I want to tell His name. Amen. For the Bible said... In Acts 4 and 12, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. How many is glad for Jesus tonight? Hallelujah. It's all in Him. And I do want to praise Him. I want to lift Him up. I feel Him in this place. Let's go to the book of Luke, chapter number 5 tonight. Everybody has got a Bible. If you'll meet me there in the Word of the Lord, St. Luke's Gospel, the 5th chapter. I got something on my heart tonight. And while you're turning there, I do want to say it's just a great honor to be here at Pine Grove again. I, uh, I've been looking forward to this meeting and just excited. Appreciate Brother Sparks. I want to give honor to your pastor, Brother and Sister Sparks. We appreciate them very much. And uh, my family will be here the rest of the revival, the Lord willing. But um, I hate they're not here tonight. You pray for my grandmother, if you'll think about it. She grew up uh, in eastern Kentucky in Pineville. But she's been living up our way for many years now. But she's, uh, she's a great woman of God. But she's got dementia and uh, can't be left alone. And my mother had some appointments she had to be at. She'd been waiting for us to get home. We've been gone for five weeks, and we just got home. And so my, my wife had to... Uh, be there. We can't leave my Nana alone. So that's where they're at tonight. But they'll be here tomorrow night, the Lord willing. And uh, uh, just excited to be here. Thank you for your giving in the offering. May the Lord bless you. I'd like to have revival this week, wouldn't you? That's what we need. Amen. The world, or not the world really, but the church, we call this Holy Week. Leading up into Resurrection Sunday, Easter. How many's ever heard that term? Holy Week or Passion Week? And uh, so, uh, whatever you want to call it, amen, we'll call it Good Friday and then Easter and the resurrection. I'd like just to see God do something great in this place while we're here during this holy week. I'd like to get passionate about Passion Week, amen, and uh, I'd like to see God help us right here tonight. Luke chapter 5. I want to begin reading in verse 1. You can stand if you're able for the reading of the word of the Lord. St. Luke's Gospel chapter 5 and verse 1. The Bible reads like this. And it came to pass 
That is, as the people pressed upon him, that's Jesus, to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them. And I want you to grab hold of this phrase, and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep, and let down your nets for a draught. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have told all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, hallelujah, I, I, that's not really what I come to preach about tonight, but I want you to notice that. I love what Brother Yule was saying earlier. Notice when this miracle happened. It didn't happen just when they heard the word of the Lord. How many know it takes more than just being a hearer only, huh? Amen. Well, there's something beyond hearing. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes. Hallelujah. How many would like to get over there where the blessing of the Lord is tonight? Maybe I'll ask it different. How many want to do what it takes to get what we need from the Lord? Amen. Uh, you can be seated tonight. That's all we'll read. I thought when Brother Yule was testifying, amen, Jesus asked different people to do different things at different times. He told Abraham, go up to Mount Moriah. He told Zacchaeus, come down from the tree. He told Noah, lead them in to the ark. He told Moses, bring them out of Egypt. Amen. I don't know what God's going to ask us to do tonight. He might say up, down, in, or out. But how many can say whatever he says, it'll be worth it to do what the Master says. Amen. Glory to God. That's all we'll read. A great miracle right here. This uh, catch of fish for these disciples. I, I want to look at verse 2 for a little while here tonight. Verse 2, notice where these disciples were when Christ found them. I was drawn to this when I was reading the Word of God uh, today. The Bible said that they had gone out of their ships. And this is a phrase I want to preach about. They were washing their nets. Amen. I, I might try to get into this a little more in a moment if the Holy Ghost will help us. But how many Bible readers understand in Bible days that was the last act of the day for the fishermen? Amen. If we went down to the Sea of Galilee, Brother Sparks, or the, the Bible called it the Lake of Gennesaret right here, the same place. Just a different way of saying it. If we went down there and all the fishermen were out of their boats washing their net, you know what that said to us? It's over. Amen. There's no sense in trying. Let's go home. Nothing is happening. And that's what was going on. But notice what Jesus said right here. He had a better message. He didn't say it's time to wash the net. He said, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught. Praise God. I want to preach tonight. How many believe it's not over yet? Amen. That's what Jesus was saying right here. Amen. It's not over. It might look like it's over. Amen. And I, I can, how I many can say we could fill in the blank right there. The days of revival are not over yet. Amen. The days of miracles, souls being saved uh, are not over yet. I want to preach just a few minutes tonight on don't wash your net yet. Amen. Don't wash your net 
yet. Would you lift your hands one more time? Let's pray together tonight. Heavenly Father, I thank you on this first night of revival. Our brother just told us to hang on. And I felt that in my heart today. I want to echo that tonight. And I pray you'll help us not to be weary. Help us to throw that net out by faith one more time in this altar. And we'll thank you that you are in the filling business. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. amen. And amen. Don't wash your net yet. Hallelujah. I read a great story. Amen. And maybe this will be appropriate for the word of God that I want to get into tonight. I read about a man by the name of E. Stanley Jones. Maybe some of you have read about him, E. Stanley Jones. Uh, he was a great preacher, a missionary, really all the way up into modern times, into the 1970s. Uh, God was using him in a mighty way. Uh, but I read about the first sermon that he ever preached. Uh, and Brother Yule, he said by his own admission, uh, he said it was a flop. Amen. I'm glad I'm not the only one that preaches some of the hosts. Uh, Amen. He uh, he was only 19 years old. Uh, and Brother E. Stanley Jones said, I invited everybody that I knew he was confident. He said, I'd studied for three weeks. Uh, and he got up behind that pulpit. How many know sometimes it just goes wrong? Amen. And he got up there. You preachers have been there. He said, I looked out. And he said, all of a sudden, I forgot everything I'd studied. Uh, amen. He went blank and he got tongue tied. And to make matters worse, Sister Sparks, uh, there was a row full of young ladies his age. Uh, and when he looked down, they were laughing at him. Uh, they were making fun uh, of that young preacher. And something broke uh, in the spirit of East Stanley Jones. Uh, and he shut his Bible. He'd only been up there about five minutes. Uh, but he closed the Bible and he said, I quit. Uh, I I can't do this. And he went and sat down. How I many know that's what the devil wants us to do spiritually? Come on now. Hey Amen. I think the devil's favorite words to hear are I quit. I can't. How I many hear the world saying that right now? I can't live it. I can't take it. We need a revival. How I many would like to get up from the altar saying I can do all things through Christ. Somebody say amen if you believe his power is enough. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. But there E. Stanley Jones was. And that young man sat down on the front row and the pastor got up. It's kind of awkward, you know. Amen. He was trying to amen, encourage that young man and say something. Amen. And the E. Stanley Jones said, how many know the devil will get in your ear? And he said, as I was sitting there, the devil got in my ear and said, you're a failure. You're not even called. Amen. God isn't even hearing you. Amen. But here's why I'm telling this. He said, while I was hearing all that, amen, God got in my other ear. And God asked him one question. Have I done anything for you? He he said, yes. He said, then get back up and tell it. Amen. And he, Stanley Jones, popped up like popcorn. And he said this. He said, hold on, Pastor. I'm not done yet. Amen. And he got to testifying. He didn't even go back up there. He just got to telling how God, I mean, no, nobody can tell your testimony like you. And he got to telling how God had saved him, uh, how God had delivered him. Uh, and it only took a couple minutes. Uh, a man ran out of the back uh, and he got saved that night. Uh, hallelujah. 
that was his first convert. And if you've read about E. Stanley Jones, he went to India and he won thousands. Amen. He even preached to Gandhi. Gandhi didn't get saved, but he preached to that man. But it all started that night because he got up one more time and he tried again. And I feel like preaching to somebody. I mean, oh, that's what we got to do in this hour. Somebody ought to tell the devil, I'm going to pray again. I'm not done. I'm going to sing again. I'm going to testify again. I may believe it's time to launch out into the deep where the blessing of the Lord is. Amen. Glory to God. I may believe if we're not done, God's not done. Amen. The days of revival are not over. Amen. I was driving down here and I remember what Brother L.L. L. Collins used to say. I got to go to church with him when I pastored in Hamilton. And Brother Collins, amen, man, Brother Yule, sometimes he'd make me feel convicted when I'd come in tired, had a bad day, like you were saying. And we'd wheel Brother Collins up there. Amen. He had had so many strokes. All he had left was a left hand at work. And we'd put that microphone in his pocket and he'd wave that left hand and he'd say church I heard him say it a hundred times you know what triumph is it's try with a little off behind it amen and I know what will bring revival if we throw that net I'd like to try again and put a little off behind it how many believe we can pull in a net full of the blessing of the Lord this week. Amen. Don't wash that net yet. Hallelujah. I want to look at a couple things right here tonight. And I didn't come to preach long. Not at all. But I want to look at this text. Luke chapter 5. Here we meet some men who got a fishing lesson from a faithful Lord. Amen. That's what I want to call this story. A fishing lesson from a faithful Lord. But how I many know it's a lot more than just a fishing lesson? Amen. It was a life lesson. Uh, it was a spiritual lesson. Uh, I'd like to learn it in my soul. Wouldn't you? Uh, amen. Let, let me give you a couple things uh, that God laid on my heart today. Notice with me, number one, the night that was futile. The night that was futile. How many be honest tonight? How many has ever been in a dark place spiritually where you looked around and you felt like nothing's happening? Come on now. Amen. God's not hearing me. Amen. My prayers aren't getting past the ceiling. Uh, nothing's going on. Uh, amen. Listen again to Luke 5 and verse 2. Uh, when Jesus passed by, here's what he found. The Bible said he saw two ships standing by the lake but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets the night that had been futile amen I don't want to slow it down right here but, but I want to dwell on this for just a moment amen I said it earlier but, but we understand in Bible days washing the nets was the last act of the day for the fishermen amen Amen. I don't think we got any professional fishermen. Well, some of us men, some of us, some of the women might like to fish, but I don't think anybody here amen, depends on it for a paycheck. Amen. Like Peter, James, and John had. Amen. But we can relate. I was thinking today, Brother Sparks. Some of us men, when we get done working, amen, we wipe the tools down. The concrete men. I was a hod carrier for a while. When you get done with concrete, you don't just throw the trial, amen, away with concrete on it to dry. No, no. And then you wipe it down. You clean it off. You want it to be in good condition, right? And then when we get done having a, a supper, and then we wash the dishes. I hope we do anyway, amen, before we put them up. We want them to be ready for the next time, right? Are you with me tonight? And that's the way it was for the these fishermen uh, at the end of the day and then they'd get the nets out and they would uh, pick the seaweed off of them uh, and take the moss uh, they didn't want it to dry rot uh, 
Amen. They washed those nets all day long. They've been out there. They've been throwing those nets out and they pull them in across the rocks. And maybe they had torn those nets. How many Bible readers remember where the Bible said they were mending their nets? Amen. That's what they did on the shore. At the end of the day, and so I'm going to say it again. If we went on a fishing trip and we rolled up to the Sea of Galilee, Brother Mitchell, if we was out there and we pulled up and we're excited, man, we got big plans. You know how it is when you go fishing. I'm going to catch that big one. I mean, it all be like that when we come to church. I mean, know that. I'm going to get that blessing. And I've been after. Amen. Amen. But if we pulled up there and all the big boys. I'm talking about the professionals. If they were out of their boat and they were washing their net, you know what that said to us? It's over. Amen. Amen. Let's go to Long John Silver's. Amen. It's not going to happen here. Amen. Come on now. Amen. It's over. Why try? And that's what I come to preach tonight. Because how many know if we're not careful, and I don't sense it here, but how many know the devil wants that sentiment uh, to come into the last day church. Uh, amen. People look around uh, and they see the world and you know what they say? Uh, why try? Uh, nobody wants revival. Uh, nobody's getting saved. Uh, nobody's living holy. Uh, it's over. Uh, amen. I come to tell somebody tonight the devil is a liar. Uh, hallelujah. How many believe it's not over? Over, uh, until God says it's over. Uh, amen. Anybody believe he's still doing what he always did? Uh, hallelujah. Uh, amen. I, I, I can think of a lot of things right here. And we can pass this mic around. And you can tell about miracles and uh, answered prayer. Uh, but here's one that I thought of. Amen. That, that came to my mind uh, when I was pastoring. There was a dear saint. And uh, I noticed. Amen. How many know the shepherds got a different ear than anybody else? Amen. God gives them that eye of a shepherd, that ear, that heart of a shepherd. And I noticed Sister Sparks, uh, this good woman in our church, uh, she came alone for years uh, and she'd been faithful to put in prayer requests for her husband, but she stopped doing it. And I noticed, I didn't say nothing. Weeks went by and she had quit throwing that prayer. Hey, Amen. You know what we're doing in prayer requests? Uh, I heard them here tonight. We're throwing a net out there. Uh, amen. Asking God to fill it. Uh, amen. Uh, believe in God that it might be tonight. Uh, but, but she had given up. Uh, and I went and asked her, Amen, how come you're not? I noticed you're not putting in prayer requests. Uh, and she said, Pastor, the devil told me, Amen, God isn't hearing me. Uh, amen. He's never going to get saved. Uh, amen. And she was right. It looked like uh, everybody in the church had invited him uh, and he didn't want nothing to do with it he'd tell you plain and simple hey amen how he's never coming the roof was going to cave in uh, but you know what we did brother Mitchell we tried to encourage her throw it back out there uh, hey amen don't give up now uh, and she started putting that prayer request in uh, and one day uh, and I'm no super saint uh, I, don't, I don't want it to sound like that uh, but one day I was mowing my grass uh, and God said, go visit him right now. Huh. Hallelujah. Huh. And I thought, uh-oh. Huh. I know how this is going to go. Huh. I didn't have a bunch of faith. Huh. Amen. But I went over there. Huh. And when I pulled up, he was sitting up. Amen. On the front porch. Huh. And when I got out of the car, tears. Huh. Amen. Before I said a word. Huh. Amen. It's like picking a ripe piece of fruit. Huh. Amen. Off a tree. Huh. God had him ready. And he got saved in his front yard. And that sister came out shouting all over the front yard. I've come to tell somebody, we don't know when God is going to fill the net. Hallelujah. I don't know when he's going to do it. I've only got one job. Throw it out there again. Throw it out there one more time. And they can say, I'm not giving up. Till the answer comes. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You say, preacher, 
Can I preach this a few more minutes? Amen. Hey you say, preacher, act like that while I try, spirit will never get a hold of me. I'll never get to that point. Hey Amen. I'll never be weary and well doing. Hold on now. It got a hold of Peter. Amen. Did you notice what we read tonight? It got a hold of Peter when Jesus said, launch out into the deep. Peter didn't jump up and say, here we go. Listen to what he said. Verse 5. Master, we have told all the night and have taken nothing. Amen. How many hear a little kickback right there? Huh? And then I, I circled that word toiled. Huh? You know what he was saying? Uh, we're not out here fishing for fun. Uh, you ever been with people? They didn't care if they caught anything. They just liked the water. Hey, Amen. They liked the fellowship, wet in the line. You know what Peter was saying? Uh, we've been working, toiling. Huh? We're working. Uh, we're weary of working. Uh, it's dark. Huh? Hey, Amen. Boy, I see a picture of where we get as children of God sometimes. Don't you? Uh, hey man, I'm weary in the work. Uh, I'm tired. I've thrown that net out. Uh, hey man, so many times and pulled it in. My arm is hurting. Uh, I don't feel like doing it. Uh, I'm empty and embarrassed. Uh, I felt like in my prayer today. Uh, maybe somebody's there tonight. Uh, I come to just tell you a simple word. Uh, hey man, throw it out there. Uh, how many believe it's his will to feel. Hey, I'm going to say it again. I'll tell you why I'm excited tonight. If he cares enough to fill a net with fish, how many believe he cares enough to fill every believer with the joy of the Lord and the Holy Ghost? There's a net filler in the house, but we got to throw it out by faith. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. I remember reading about a missionary. I've been thinking about missionaries tonight, I guess. But I read about a missionary. I forget which one it was. One of the, amen, well-known ones. David Brainerd or David Livingston. This missionary went over to Africa. And he said he was weary and well-doing. Amen. He said, I was homesick. Nobody was getting saved. Nobody was listening. Nobody was coming when he preached. And he's on his way to church one Sunday. And he said, I was going down that path. And he said, when I was walking, a native passed him, heading the other direction. And that guy had a fishing pole. And he just was whistling. He didn't have a care in the world on Sunday morning. And the native, when they passed, the native greeted him. And he asked him, are you going to church again? He kind of mocked him. He said, every time I see you, you're going to the same place, the same church. Don't you get bored? Amen. Aren't you tired of going to church? And that man of God wasn't in any mood to hear that. And he just flipped him back around. He said, are you going fishing again? Amen. Every time I see you, you're going to the same spot. Don't you get bored with fishing? Amen. Going down there. And that native got defensive. And he he said, oh, you don't understand, preacher. There's a river down there. Hey, man, and it's always moving. And there's always something fresh. And besides that, I'm hungry again. And that preacher got to shouting. And he said, now that you mention it, that's why I go to church. There's a river down there. And it's always moving. And there's always something fresh. Fresh. And besides that, I'm hungry again. Is there anybody here on Wednesday night? How about at Pine Grove? How many is hungry for another wave of glory? Hallelujah. I'll tell you what I'm hungry for. I'd like to see somebody come home. Some sinner get saved. And the church be revived in the Holy Ghost. Amen. God is waiting on us. To throw that net out there and believe him to do it. Amen. Glory to God. Let me wind this down tonight. The night that was futile. What do you do when it's dark and nothing's happening? Amen. The night that was futile, but the nevertheless that followed. Amen. The night that was futile, but the nevertheless that followed. Listen again to verse 5. I picked on Peter a little bit for being weary, but I got to give him credit. Listen to what he said one more time. He said, Master, we have told all the night 
and taken nothing. Amen. Woo. The devil wanted it to end right there. I mean, oh, the devil would like his service to end right there. Nothing. Amen. Nothing happened. But hold on. There's something on the other side of nothing that changes everything. Amen. Amen. Master, we have told all the night and taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Amen. Do you know what Peter was saying right there? It don't make sense. I'm a professional fisherman. I've been doing this all my life. And my mind says it ain't time. I mean, if you fish all night and you didn't catch them now, the sun's up and they went down too deep. It's not going to work. But how many know? Amen. We got to have that spirit. So you know why we don't have revival sometimes? We got it all figured out. Amen. We know what's going to happen, what isn't going to happen, what can't happen. I'd like to have a revival where I say, nevertheless, have thy word. Amen. If we got a net in our hand, nevertheless in our heart, we have enough to have revival. Anybody believe that? Amen. I'll tell you what my prayer is. I'd like to see somebody rear back and say, I know what the doctor said. I know what the doctor's report is. But nevertheless, I believe he's a healer. I know what the devil said. But nevertheless, come on, let's stand right now and lift your hand up and tell God, I'm not giving up. I'm going to hold on. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody tell the Lord that tonight. I'm hanging on. I'm trusting you. Amen. Somebody ask God to help us in this altar right now. Glory, 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 glory. I don't think it was a coincidence. Amen. Boy, don't you like how the Holy Ghost orchestrates stuff. Our brother jumped up and said, told that story and said, the moral of it was hold on. Amen. And you know what the Holy Ghost has been saying to me all day? Hold on. Amen. It's not over. So I come to music, if you will. Throw it out there one more time. Who knows when he's going to move? Who knows when he's going to say? Amen. The night that was futile, the nevertheless that followed, and the net that was filled. Amen. The net that was filled. You hear? I closed my Bible and I may not quote it exact, but you hear what the Bible said? When they had this done. Preaching time's over. Now it's doing time. Amen? Right. That's what Brother Yule was telling us. Kind of like that guy, his wife was sick and he got home from church earlier than normal. And the lady rose up from the sick bed and said, is the, is the preaching done? Amen? And the man said, nope. Amen? He said, she said, well, you're home. He said, yeah, the sermon's done, but now it's time to do what the Bible said. Amen? How many know it's doing time for the church right now? Is the preaching over? No, it's time to do it. That's what the older call is. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes. How many know God can do great things in this hour? In fact, I, I'm not going to read it. I closed my Bible, but you Bible readers, that's read on. You remember how great God moved. They caught so many fishes, the net break. Amen? Amen. Amen. And then some of those men helped them get them in the boat, and they caught, and, and, and there were so many fish that the boat almost sunk. I remember reading that. That's a lot of fish right there. Amen. The devil says it's over. You know what God is sitting here saying? I can do exceedingly abundantly above all. Amen. I can pour you out a blessing uh, that there is not even room enough to contain it. Uh, how many is going to believe God for things like that? Right here in your family, in your heart. Come on, let's, let's make an altar right here tonight. I preach my heart. Let's say, God, I'm not giving up. Come on, let's come in prayer and throw it out there. You got a need? You praying for a lost loved one and they've already told you I'm not coming on Easter come on let's throw it out there one more time praying for a child praying for a backslider praying for the Holy Ghost I don't know what it is amen but God wanted us to tell you tonight throw it out there throw it out there by faith and pull it in if we got enough faith